Hello everyone, uh, the Singfield Cup has just started two days ago and uh, while we're waiting for Kasparov to join them in the Rapid and Blitz section, uh, Aronian made sure that even the classical section doesn't go uh, without fireworks and uh, this game is uh, played in uh, round one of the Singfield Cup 2017 and uh, Aronian shows uh, why they call him the most creative top 10 player in the world. So let's see the game, uh, Aronian is white and Yanni Pomiashi is black. Uh, we have knight to f3 by Aronian, knight to f6, we have c4, c5, knight to c3, the symmetrical English opening, uh, d5, c captures on d5, knight captures on d5, and e3. Uh, we have knight captures on b3, c3, b captures on c3, and g6. And uh, this is already where Aronian uh, really starts to mix things up. He plays h4. Uh, we have bishop to g7 and now h5 going for breaking this fianchettoed structure. Uh, we have knight to c6 and uh, here is Aronian's idea of h4 and h5. He plays bishop to a3. And uh, this is a very interesting move because uh, he, he allows uh, Jan to play uh, queen to a5. Uh, and now the queen is attacking this bishop and also uh, Nepomniashi is kind of threatening to capture this uh, c-pawn with his bishop and uh, go for some sort of an attack. Uh, but this was Aronian's idea. He plays uh, rook to h4, and uh, although it's uh, not a, not often a good idea to you know just uh, push your side pawn and then develop the rook uh, this way, uh, he actually makes it work uh, because he, uh, this uh, rook to h4 move actually is protecting this bishop on a3. If the queen would capture the bishop, then simply rook to a4 and the queen is trapped. We can just check it out here and. Uh, <laughs> well, a funky way to protect the bishop, definitely. So after rook to h4, uh, Nepomniashi played uh, bishop to d7. And uh, we have queen to b3. And now uh, Nepomniashi castles. <clears throat> and uh, Nepomniashi is offering his b7 pawn here. And uh, after quite a, you know, a short while, uh, Aronian plays uh, h captures on g6. We have h captures on g6 and uh, queen captures on b7. And after Aronian plays this, uh, played this queen captures on b7 move, uh, Nepomniashi, uh, well, he thought more than half an hour on what to play his next move. So obviously this uh, pawn sacrifice was, uh, you know, quite a bluff, and Aronian called it uh, very nicely. Uh, if you look at this position, the computer is suggesting uh, knight to b8 here, and then threatening uh, bishop to c6. Uh, but... Uh, Obviously, uh, Nepomniashi didn't have this planned, as, like I said, he took more than half an hour for his next move. Uh, so, we have rook, uh, f to, rook f to d8, protecting this bishop. Uh, we have queen to a6, now uh, offering to exchange queens. Uh, we have uh, bishop captures on c3, and this bishop cannot be captured if uh, d captures on c3, queen captures on c3. Okay, we can just show it, then this rook is going down. So, obviously, uh, after bishop captures on c3, Aronian just uh, captures the queen, queen captures on a5, bishop captures on a5, and now bishop captures on c5. And, uh, okay, it's in uh, somewhat of an equal ending, but Aronian is a pawn up, you know, that b7 pawn that, uh, that Nepomniashi tried to bluff his way. Uh, so we have a bishop to e6, and now a bishop to b5, attacking that knight that is unprotected on c6. Uh, we have knight uh, knight to e5 and now knight to d4. Uh, rook to rook to d5 attacking the bishop uh, and the bishop captures on e7. And uh, here uh, Aronian is already threatening uh, bishop to f6 and rook to h8 checkmate. So uh, this has to be stopped. So king to g7 by Nepomniashi and we have f4. And this f4 is, is a wonderful move as it, you know, uh, kicks the knight and then this c6, c6 uh, square will be available for the bishop to, to make a double attack on the rooks. So we have uh, knight, to, knight to d7 and now uh, f5. We have uh, bishop captures on f5 and now bishop to c6 attacking this rook on, rook on d5 and rook on a8. So we have uh, rook to e5 and now knight captures on f5 first with check, you know, just trading down, uh, g captures on f5, and now uh, bishop to g5, just to get his bishop uh, out of harm's way here since it was attacked, 
uh, Nepomniachi plays king to g6, attacking the bishop once again, and now Aronian simply plays bishop to f4, and now Aronian is attacking this rook on a8, this rook on f4, and the undefended knight on d7. So Nepomniachi plays a rook to d8, defending the knight, and uh, well, Aronian just captures the knight on d7, removing the defender of this rook on e5. Uh, we have rook, a uh, rook to c5, and uh, this bishop, this light square bishop, is now attacked. And if it moved, uh, Nepomniachi could capture here on d2 and stir some trouble. But Aronian stops this immediately. He plays uh, rook to h8, h6 check. We have king to g7. And now simply rook to d6, uh, defending this bishop and also protecting d2. Uh, so we have a bishop to c7, attacking this rook, and also this bishop if the rook moves. And uh, Aryan simply plays rook to c6, and in this position Nepomniachi resigned. Uh, he's double attacking this bishop here, and uh, well, this rook is obviously attacked. And uh, of course, one more important thing, uh, Aryan is up a piece, so... There is really no point in playing this, and Nepomniachi resigns. And a very nice, very nice game. Uh, only 29 moves, so you know, always nice to see a 29 move game when the when the top 10 players are playing. And yeah, this definitely shows that uh, that h4, h5, and <laughs> rook to a4 idea uh, why they consider Aronian to be uh, the most creative top 10 player. So yeah, a, a wonderful game, and we'll see how Aronian uh, plays this tournament. Uh, he did win a couple of strong tournaments he played in uh, before this one, and uh, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this game. Uh, you can check two of my previous videos here, uh, and uh, that's it. Thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.